Hey, welcome back to another video. Here we go. If it's your first time here, my name is Timon and this is Slider Drift. Welcome. In this video, I upgrade all my electronics. I went with BNG. I think they just look a little bit better. Um, and yeah, sticking to one ecosystem is going to be a lot easier when you want things to talk to other things. What do I install? The, uh, the transducer I've already installed in the hull when I was hauled out at Boatworks, but I just need to wire that in. I've got a Halo 20 radar. I've got a new VHF that's got AIS in it and a little wireless handset for up in the cockpit. I redo some of the cockpit electrics and I've got a Zeus 3S multifunctional display and I've also got the little Triton 2 display as well. And a sweet new uh, compass that I decided the old one was in a bad spot and it was a bit old and ratty so I decided to go for a nice shiny one. Alright, today we learn. I started by ripping out the first chart plot I ever made and basically everything else I didn't need. Then for marine ply, I cut out some plugs, sanded them all nice and mixed up some thickened epoxy and epoxied them into place. I prepped the surface with epoxy and then each area got at least one or two layers of 400 gram double bias. So I've put pill play on all of them as well. And now the surf space be cranking for like the whole next week. So I'm gonna head down south. This will dry before any rain comes. Um, and yeah, I'll come back to the boat in a couple of days and we'll uh, get back to work. I mixed up some fairing compound and then got back on my favorite grinder. I used templates to cut out the holes for the Triton 2 display and the multifunctional display. And then I took this opportunity to install the wireless VHF handset. Nice. It's not very nice weather out there. Just got to grab those wires, feed them out here. I think I need to extend them so I can wire that the splitter and the VHF all into the one VHF switch. So when I switch it on, all three turn on. With my multi-tool out and a thirst for cutting holes in my boat, I decided to take this opportunity to renew my windlass switch and also move it up in the cockpit. Some of you might be thinking, Tim on your flaming galah, you put it upside down. I've got down on the top and up and it's upside down because that's not conventional. But in my mind, when I press that, the anchor goes down and it also goes sort of that way and up comes back this way onto the boat. So that makes more sense to me. So I've just put it upside down. Oh, I better check to make sure I've done it right. I've uh, laid down about uh, $3.20 worth of newspaper there. If I remember correctly, that is the actual uh, industry standard for a painting a spot about this size. So we're good to go. And that was about uh, 4,000 meters of uh, masking tape. I used International Interprotect as my epoxy primer and then I used International All Grit Oyster White for my paint. I was told that the color of this boat was Oyster White. So it'll be interesting to see if this comes out the same color as the boat. Whoopsies. So you can definitely see the color difference between that and that. Obviously there was a compass there, a big hole there, a big hole there. What this means is slowly but surely, this will be the new color of the boat and I'll just slowly paint it that color bit by bit. I removed the old VHF and a CD player. Yes, you heard correctly. Cut some more holes, then installed my new BNG VHF. This VHF has an integrated GPS and AIS transponder. Oh, and it's new and shiny. I'm just gonna leave that on and hopefully I can hear something and I've done everything right. Hey, Lulu. Hey. Scrunchy face. With this BNG VHF, it also comes with a sun cover. Yeah, I'm gonna need that once every never, so. That can get thrown out. Okay, it's time to go up the mast. I've got everything that I think that I need. I've got 
I've got the rivets, the rivet gun, my drill, drill bits. I've got also this scan strut mast mount for the radar. This radar is a BNG Halo 20 plus, I believe. I've also got this cable, which is gonna have to come straight down the mast. Um, I'm going to mount my mast just above the spreader on the port side, actually facing sideways. Now I'm gonna put on my climbing gear and head up the mast. I am uh, again all by myself like always, but from an arborist background, I've got all the gear to safely go up and down the mast being attached two times when I'm working and one time when I'm sort of going up and down the mast step. So that's not gonna be a problem. And this wind, yeah, you can go now, I don't need you. It's gonna be a bit windy up here, but I'll do the best I can with filming. I marked up and drilled the holes for the mast mount, then tied the tail of my work position belt around the mount so it wouldn't go anywhere. I then drilled a rather large hole for my little mouse line. Yes, 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 yes. That Took me ages. Got this broken hook taped to a, uh, a chopstick. Does anyone know a better way to get that out of the mast? Just like it was made for it, the radar fit perfectly in my dirty clothes bag. Damn, I can see the next squall coming, but I'm just gonna have to go up and try and get it done anyway. Here we go. And time that you're... Come on, buddy. Pretty cool. Yes! One bolt is in, so it's it's a cure. Oh my god, that was that was scary. Halo 20 plus. On the website, the plus actually stands for plus a pain in the ass to install. Okay, radar is installed. Thanks, Kate. That was definitely a two-person job. Kate was down here feeding the cable out for me. That was great. It looks good up there. It was a bit nerve-wracking because I didn't have any safeties on the thing other than my mitts. While I was up there this morning, I didn't actually get this on film, but this tiny little base plate here is for the wind vane. All I had to do was go to the top of the mast, find a spot for it, drill four holes, fix it into place. Then the wind vane literally just connects into that base. So the base stays up there permanently and you can take this down if you wish. There was stuff in its way, stuff that I couldn't move. I'm gonna have to go up there with either the grinder or a drill. But yeah, that's all I had to do. Just affix this little plate with four screws into the top of the mast. That's just not doable. I did go up the mast three or four times to try and um, figure that out. We're taking up tools and bits and pieces, but it's not gonna be able to be done. So that's a later problem now. And quite frankly, I wasn't told to think that it was gonna be an easy job. Now that I have this cable, I've also got the transducer under there. Also need to do is basically run those two cables through here and either behind here, which is my basically electronics department, or up here, which is inside essentially the hard dodger. <sighs> I'm not gonna film this. I'm just gonna do it because I'm just running cables. It's gonna be extremely boring, but I am gonna time it just before I start because this is gonna be a blink of an eye for you lucky folk. How long do you think this is gonna take me? All right, let's uh, fast forward time and see how long it takes. Okay, let's stop that clock. Three hours and 52 minutes. Let's uh, take away 10 minutes for me to eat some Easter eggs and uh, ponder my life choices. <laughs> I think I've got an MEA2000 figured out. Pretty cool little system. This here is my backbone line. And with an MEA2000, it's essential that all your devices get teed off this one line. End connectors at each end. And then yeah, one T for every every device. I'm gonna have my multifunctional display here, my Triton 2 display here, and then that comes down. This is part of the backbone now. This area here will be in my little cubby where all my electronics is, where I can set it up properly. This power supply has its own T. Transducer will come in there. This is the Bluetooth connector for the wind. And then I'll have to get another T connector and that'll go to the VHF. Good morning. It's a bit chilly this morning. So I'm up to wiring this old crummy thing, which supplies power to all the little bits and pieces in the cockpit here. I'm gonna get a new one of those today. Um, 
happens. Uh, shops open at 8.30 or 9. That little panel is falling apart and I've had a look behind there and it's an absolute mess with the wiring and all that kind of stuff. I just like to rewire it so this turns on basically everything in the cockpit and then up in the panel I can switch on all the various things so autopilot radar multifunctional displays the fish finder there is a little secret one that's coming up stay tuned for that that's gonna be very exciting but in the meantime to stay productive I've got this NSPL 500 splitter for all your splitting needs so this little thing oh wow Holy moly, it comes with a free frisbee. Haven't seen one of those in a while. So this thing basically just splits the VHF antenna for your AIS and your VHF. So one antenna for both because they both use the VHF frequency. I'll have to just wire that into the power for the VHF. And then there's a couple of cables. Should be pretty easy. So the back of my BNG chart plotter only has one ethernet port. At the moment that's getting taken up by the radar. I also want my Victron Servo GX to talk to the chart plotter, which can do, but it just needs to be connected by an ethernet cable. Hmm. So I've got this thing. It's just a ethernet switch powered, obviously I've just powered it in. Now I'm gonna run this blue ethernet cable from the switch to my Servo GX. And I'll run the yellow cable from the switch up into the dodger and to the chart plotter. And I'll get the ethernet cable from the radar and that will go into this too. I know I say that every time I'm in here, but this, oh, that's, uh, that's, it's gonna get, it's gonna get redone sometime. I know I say it every time, but it will. I installed my new compass. It's an Olympic 135, I believe. Then a whole bunch of soldering and wiring to finish off the switch panel in the cockpit. Back up the mast, my favourite, to install the wind vane base. Right yeah, that's all done. Now I just gotta go down the mast, grab the wind vane. I need to pair it while it's down there near the base station and then bring it up and just click it in. I just did something really stupid. <sighs> the base station needs to be half a meter away from the, um, the device when they're pairing. And so I had it up there, just sitting up there on top of the solar panels. And then when I walk back down, <laughs> When I walk back down, that must have moved the boat and it tipped the thing and then it slid off and I almost caught it going over and now it's in the drink. <laughs> oh my God. How bloody stupid can you be? I'm gonna go down and get it, hopefully. I'm not looking forward to jumping in the canal and swimming to the bottom either. Oh well, sad, sad, sad. Yeah, so visibility is like 30 centimeters. I literally ran face first into the mud. Um, kept on getting darker and darker. And then I just went into the mud. So. And then I just did concentric circles around where I ran into the mud until I found it. Okay, let's get this cleaned up. Such a relief. Yeah, boy. Ready, yeah, then all that's left for me to do is chuck this up the top of the mast. Well, I don't mind to slow down anymore. And that 
is basically that that little bit of footage there that I just showed you that was from a uh, my twilight sail here in the Broadwater a day or two ago that was really cool there was uh, just a tiny little bit of wind a whole heap of yachts out there yeah it was really nice to be sitting out here and just enjoying that and like the music said just slowing down a little bit okay let me show you what the final product looks like alrighty from right to left what do we got we got this sweet little Japanese uh, lamp that I made in between all my epoxying. You guys know about this, that was in the last video. This compass is really cool. You can just start to see the light that's inside it. These little lubber lines on the side are awesome. If I want to tiller from over here or over here, I can see that lubber line and I know where I'm going. And we got here, at the moment I've got my sailing instruments on, the radar and the compass light. The Triton 2 display gives you a few options. You can just cycle through all those, whatever one you want to keep up. I generally keep up this one. It's called Sail Steer. And then this multifunctional display is pretty killer as well. This whole screen is basically customizable and I've got some presets up here. If I go into these presets on the side here, I can choose one that I want to see. Let's just say I want to see my radar, my Victron and the chart. So that comes up here and I have my radar over here, which basically looks like the matrix to me. I have no idea what I'm looking at. My chart plotter over here and all my Victron information here, which is really important. I mainly at the moment just have this on chart. And then yeah, so one good thing with the chart that I have found out so far is this thing called Genesis. So if people log their sonar, they can upload it and I can download it and overlay it on my map and I get a lot more information um, because it's a lot more accurate and up to date with all the people's logs. And that is my VHF. I haven't really figured that out yet. Um, it keeps on going off. Uh, it's the AIS telling me I'm going to run into someone. I don't have my um, MMSI number, is that right? Or D D. I don't have my AS uh, registered to myself yet because I still need to do my VHF course actually. I just haven't had enough time to uh, actually go in and figure all that stuff out. So I do have a lot on my plate at the moment. Yeah, like I said, I need to figure the radar out. Actually, I need to figure it all out. But yeah, what I want to do is give you a long-term review on this whole BNG suite. I didn't see much information out there, particularly on radar whether it is useful. A lot of people were just saying, yeah, it's useful. You can see exactly how fast the scores are going and, and when they're coming to you, which is useful for sure. But like, is there more uses to that? Maybe fog? Besides squalls and fog, is it actually useful for for sailing apart from those two niche cases? Or are those niche cases absolutely critical? And then when you have the radar, that's, that's worth it for the whole time. So that's what I wanna do sometime in the distant future. I'll give you guys a long-term review on all this BNG equipment. Yeah, that's it for another video and you made it this far. You absolute bloody legend. Okay, bye.